Hi, my name is John. Today I'll be installing the power drawbar for the R8 spindle on my TAG upgrade that I call the TAG Mach. Welcome to another episode. So today I'm going to be installing the power drawbar that goes along with the R8 spindle that I purchased and I'll have links below to the information about those two items. I'm pretty much done with the Tegmach upgrade. There are a few small things that I want to do, but what that means is by this weekend, I should be using the machine and milling some parts. Anyway, let's head to the workshop and get started. Here's the power drawbar that I plan to install next. I already took it off of the spindle. It's held in place by these nuts with springs and uh, spacers. And I won't need to put these back in until at the end because these are used to hold this in alignment. It's not used to hold it in place. It's actually this slot here that holds it in place. So the first thing I want to do is install some of the, the fittings into these ports. So it comes with these two fittings. I'll just go ahead and uh, screw these in. Okay, then I'll tighten them down. And then these actually turn so I can position them where I want after the fact. There's this pipe that will go in there. And this pipe goes into this right here, which is the, the valve. You can see there's a button here. And these are just loosely fit in right now. But the idea is that uh, I'll tighten these down and then put the tubes from here into these two ports here. And I'm going to need to figure out which one goes into which. I'll just be using the button. At some point in the future, I might decide to make this electronically controlled. So this can be controlled by a foot pedal, for example. But for now, I'm just going to use the, the manual switch. So let me go ahead and uh, tighten these two. And then this will be mounted to this plate here. There are two screw holes here that mount to either of these two or these two. So it can go in like this. And that will go on the side of the spindle, something like this. Okay, I'm going to start by putting a screw in here and see how this fits. Okay, so that hits down there, but that'll fit right there. I'll get the T-nut started. And that should be fine for now. I can always move this uh, at some point in the future. And let me grab the power draw bar. And you can see that this slides on top. Uh, at least it's supposed to. Oh, I see. I have to tighten this down. Okay. So the first step is going to be tighten the Belleville washers down so that this is low enough to clear the power draw bar. I need to tighten these washers, but before I do, I need to make sure that I put some RA tooling into the collet because you don't want to tighten the collet with nothing in it. So I have a brand new R8 that I'll put in here. A TTS holder that I, I should say. Okay, so I'll put that in there and now I'll go ahead and uh, start tightening. And they say that uh, you tighten these until these are pretty much flat. And once you do that, then the uh, power draw bar should fit on just fine. 
And you have to take the power draw bar on and off quite a few times to get this adjusted just right. So we'll see if I have this set up correctly once I get this tightened a little bit more. Okay. Let's see if this slides over now. Okay, so it doesn't, it just barely clears. But that's going to be rubbing, so I think I need to tighten that just a little bit more and see how that works. Now I just noticed that this seems to be adjustable here, but I'll go ahead and start with that and see how it is. Because once I put the washer, the, uh, there, there are some other bolts in here uh, that'll hold this up. This comes with two airlines that are plenty long, and I think I'll start with them without cutting them short. I can cut them short later. So I'll just go ahead and hook those up. I believe it's the front one to the bottom and the back one to the top, but we'll find out. Now the next thing I want to do is hook an airline up to the bottom here. And I have a hose here that does not have a swiveling part, so we'll see how that goes. Let's see if I can get it in without taking this off. Yep, no problem. So I pressurized it to 40 PSI. I don't hear any air leaks, so that's good. So now I'll press the button. And it's not enough to move the, the washers, which is fine. I now have the compressor up to 200 PSI, but I've got this set to 60 PSI. I'm gonna work my way up slowly. And you'll notice that I have a, a tool holder in here. You always want to have a tool holder in here when you have the washers tightened because you don't want the collet to be tight when there isn't anything in there. So let me give it a try, see how it is. Okay, still not doing much, which is fine. I just want to do it slowly, so I'm going to take it up to 80 PSI and see how that is. Now I'll take it up to 100 PSI my target is 120 PSI. Okay. Well, it looks like this regulator only goes up to 115 PSI. So I guess I'll go with that. And it isn't enough to, uh, to release it. So that means I need to do a little bit of work here. Uh, basically, I need to loosen this a little bit and keep loosening it a little bit until it will release the, the tool holder. So I'll go a full turn, see how that does. This is why you don't want to use the screws to hold this in place, because you have to take this in and out quite a bit while you're adjusting this. Oops. Okay. So that's going to work. Let me tighten it half a turn because I want it to just barely come out. Okay. Let me try that. Nope, too tight. So I'll go back quarter turn. That's a tad tight, so I'm going to back it off just a tiny bit. Oh, actually, that's probably perfect. So I think I'll leave it there. So there are spacers that go underneath here and then the screw goes through. 
easier said than done when all the hose, hoses are on here. I could probably release the hose and make things easier for myself, but looks like I've got that one started. Definitely easier after the first one. Then the two in the back. Okay, so I'll give that another try. Perfect. So it's all set to go. I took the screws out because I found that this was a little too tight here. So I wanted to see if I could adjust that. And fortunately, as you can see here, sorry, there, there's a nice screw slot. And if I turn this, it adjusts that screw. So now if I put it back on, I can control the clearance. And I want to make sure that when this is up, uh, which will, which it should be, when we have the spacers in, that it won't rub. Now that I've adjusted this so that there's a uh, good gap there and set everything up, you can see it's all set to go and I'll turn it on. That's uh, 1600 RPM and uh, you can see that's working quite well. Let's take a look in more detail about how a power draw bar works. First of all, let's look at the different parts. We have an air cylinder up here, which has a piston that pushes down. I'll zoom in on what goes on here next, but this whole assembly right here is the power draw bar. The draw bar is the screw that goes from here down into the collet. And then the collet is what holds the R8 tool holder in place. Up here is the business end. These are called Belleville washers. They are washers that are not flat. They have a, a bow to them. When compressed, they provide a specific amount of force. All of these washers combined provide a certain amount of force. I'd have to calculate to find out how much. Now, just sitting here with no air pressure applied, these washers are pushing up on the draw bar. They're pushing against this plate right here, which is then attached to the top of the spindle. So right now, the force is basically between the spindle and the draw bar that's attached to the tool holder on the bottom or the collet. Now, when I activate the piston, which I will do in a little bit, the piston comes down, pushes down on the top of this screw here, or this bolt, and it moves it a very slight amount, but the slight amount that it moves it is enough to release the pressure. Now that force is acting between this cylinder here and this plate. This plate is pulling up on this ring here, and the washers are sitting up on top of this ring. Right now there's a little bit of a gap between, so when I activate the cylinder, you'll notice that this jumps up. So let me go ahead and do that. And then you can see that when I release it, it drops back down. And if you look carefully, take a look again, you can see that it is compressing the washers ever so slightly. And that's enough to release the pressure just enough so that I can remove the R8 from the collet. The force is almost entirely for the power draw bar part is right here, all in this part of the system and in here. I hope you enjoyed watching this episode on installing the power draw bar. I want to thank uh, Jarrett Grover and the other people who were involved in making this happen. It's a really nice uh, spindle and power draw bar. I'm really looking forward to using it, but I have a few more things I want to change before I start using it. For example, I need to, to move the y-axis forward. I need to unscrew it and move it to a different position. Now that the spindle is out a lot farther, I wanna change the airline and a few other small things, but that won't take me too long and by this weekend, uh, it'll be running. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up if you like it, uh, give me comments and I'll see you next time.